I think we're in a very dangerous place, meaning the inflation right now, what we just talked about, is coming from the supply side. So that's pretty clear. But at what point, or does it uh, kind of tip over into the demand side? We're starting to see that. We're starting to see uh, pretty good uh, union contracts are getting pretty good raises um, and uh, other you know, you know, minimum states are raising minimum wages, etc. A lot of that's counterproductive. Certainly, the minimum wage tends to lose jobs. But, but in the short run, uh, if you have to pay people more, you're going to raise your prices. Economic expert Jim Rickards warns that hyperinflation is not just a possibility; it's on the horizon. He believes that the Federal Reserve's plan to raise interest rates will actually make inflation worse, not better. This means we need to brace ourselves and look for both the challenges and opportunities this economic shift may bring. Rickards predicts tough times ahead, forecasting a potential recession with unemployment rates possibly rising to 4% or 5%. Despite Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's belief that current hardships are necessary for long-term stability, Rickards thinks these measures might lead to even more economic trouble. Historically, the Federal Reserve has aimed for at least 2% inflation yearly to ensure price stability. Yet Rickards points out that despite recent hikes in interest rates, inflation is still climbing. Shockingly, since 1913, the dollar has lost 95% of its value, and during the 1980s alone, it lost half. Are we approaching another dramatic downturn? However, it's not all doom and gloom. Experienced investors know that times of market turbulence can create valuable opportunities. As inflation diminishes buying power and interest rates curb spending, some sectors might not only withstand the impact, but also thrive. During hyperinflation, commodities and real assets like gold and real estate often act as safe havens. These assets typically hold their value better as the currency falls, providing a shield against inflation. Investors might want to think about shifting their portfolios to include these solid assets for more stability during uncertain times. Despite the broader economic challenges, sectors fueled by innovation such as technology continue to offer substantial growth prospects. Companies leading in efficiency and automation solutions could outshine the general market. Investing in these trailblazers could yield significant gains even as other areas falter. Facing the threat of hyperinflation and recession, it's crucial to be strategic. By understanding the limits of current monetary policies and spotting strong investment opportunities, we can navigate these rough waters. By focusing on tangible assets and innovative sectors, investors can not only survive, but potentially come out ahead. Here's what Rickards has to say about it. This is what we said uh, a while ago. Uh, inflation is not coming down. Now, that's the story. That's the narrative. That's what Wall Street likes to talk about because they just want to sell your stocks. So. It goes by a couple names. Uh, the first name is the, the pivot. When would the Fed pivot from rate hikes to rate cuts? That's the, the infamous pivot. Um, they, they stopped hiking rates in July uh, 2023. So that, that is true. They're, they're just on hold for the time being. But they're not even close to a rate cut. And that's what we've been saying. Uh, but, Wall Street, you know, but Wall Street started talking about this two years ago. It was the summer of 2022. In a series of six talks, Jerome Powell, the chair of the Federal Reserve, has been hammering home one key message, the Fed's target of 2% inflation. Powell insists that to hit this target, interest rates need to rise, even if it means pushing the economy into recession and increasing unemployment. Despite Powell's stern warnings, the markets have surprisingly rallied, suggesting that investors might be seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, believing inflation will soon be under control. Normally, Powell's cautions would signal a downturn in the markets. Higher interest rates usually tighten financial conditions, lessen consumer spending, and slow down economic growth. However, the markets have instead surged. Investors appear optimistic that inflation is on its way to being tamed, boosting market confidence and driving prices up. Economic analyst Jim Rickards presents a contrasting viewpoint. He believes that the Federal Reserve has already hit the terminal rate, the peak interest rate, where inflation begins to naturally fall without further hikes. Rickards criticizes the continued rate increases, arguing that they're unnecessary and could lead to economic disaster by pushing the economy closer to a crash. Rickards warns of the dangers of overshooting with rate hikes. Each additional increase could unnecessarily squeeze the economy tighter, potentially stifling growth and leading to even higher unemployment. He argues that if inflation is already set to decrease, further hikes are not only unnecessary, but could also damage the economy. The big question is when will the Fed realize it has reached the terminal rate and stop the aggressive hikes? Rickards points out that the Fed needs to consider the time it takes for policy changes to affect inflation. Continuing on this path increases the risk of a severe economic downturn, according to Rickards. This ongoing debate underscores the delicate balance the Fed must navigate to manage inflation without derailing the economy. 
When the government spends money, they're giving it to somebody. The, the money that the Fed created, they give it to the banks, the banks give it back. You know, end of story. The money that the Congress spends, the deficit spending, it's going somewhere. It's buying weapons, it's going to, oh, food stamps or welfare or Medicare or Social Security checks or, um, you know, the Green News scam or, you know, a lot of it's kind of wasted. But it's going out into the economy. People are getting paid. Corporations are getting paid. They're paying their workers. That money actually does create growth. Now, um, but, it, but there's another problem associated with that. So, so the short answer is monetary policy doesn't work. It's a joke. We follow it. We report on it. But I'll tell you as an analyst, it's, it's a joke. Um, fiscal policy does work, but at a very high cost. And here it is. So the U.S. economy in the fourth quarter of 2023, and we're seeing something similar in the first quarter of 2024. We won't have that data for a couple more weeks, but it looks like it's growing about 2.4%, 2.5%, which, you know, it's, it's low compared to potential, but that's decent growth. But how much is the debt going up at the same time? The debt's going up faster. The debt's going up like 3 3.5% on an annualized basis. So... Are you running deficits? Yes. Are you getting some growth? Yes. But the debt is going up faster than the growth. And so this shows up in a measurement called debt to GDP. Take you know, Because people throw around big numbers, and they are big numbers. You know, $37 trillion of national debt. With interest rates climbing and government spending surging, many people are wondering how to shield their money from inflation's damaging effects. The Federal Reserve is advocating for more rate hikes to tame inflation while the market appears optimistic expecting inflation to cool down soon. But who's correct in this scenario? Let's explore economic expert Jim Rickard's views and some tactics to protect your investments. Currently, we're dealing with high interest rates combined with significant government expenditure. This mix stirs market volatility and uncertainty. The Federal Reserve's strategy to hike rates aims to control inflation, but also risks nudging the economy toward recession. Meanwhile, Unchecked government spending could fuel inflation counteracting the Fed's efforts. Jim Rickards argues that the Fed has already reached what he calls the terminal rate, the point at which further hikes aren't needed because inflation should begin to decline on its own. He warns that additional rate increases could do more harm than good, potentially triggering an economic crash. Recognizing the right time to halt rate hikes is crucial, according to Rickards, to prevent worsening the economic situation. To navigate this stormy economic climate, consider these investment strategies informed by Rickard's insights and general market trends. Number one is diversity with tangible assets. According to Rickard's precious metals like gold and silver are traditional safe havens during inflationary times. They tend to maintain value, offering a shield against currency devaluation. Similarly, real estate also act as an inflation buffer. Real estate values and rents usually increase with inflation, helping to preserve your purchasing power. Second strategy is to invest in inflation-resilient stocks. According to Rickards companies, leading in technology and innovation can prosper even in tough economic conditions. Look for businesses with solid fundamentals and proven adaptability. Similarly, stocks in sectors like food and healthcare usually hold up well during downturns as demand for these essentials persists. Third strategy is to consider high-quality bonds. Treasury inflation-protected securities, commonly known as TIPS, are designed to counteract inflation. The principle of TIPS adjusts with inflation, offering a direct hedge. Similarly, corporate bonds are also source of for stable returns, focusing on firms with robust credit ratings to mitigate risk. Fourth strategy Rickard suggests is to monitor monetary policy and market trends. Mean, staying updated on Federal Reserve decisions and general market conditions helps in understanding how monetary policies influence different asset classes can guide your investment choices. Now the bigger question is who's right, the Fed or the market? The ongoing debate pits the Fed's cautious approach against the market's more optimistic outlook. While the Fed prepares for more hikes, the market seems to believe that inflation is nearly under control. Rickard's insights highlight the significance of identifying the terminal rate to avoid over-tightening, adding a critical dimension to the discussion. By keeping informed and strategically diversifying your investments, you can navigate these uncertain times more effectively.